sir, just like. Are you sure? Hi, sir, I've seen them too. I'll make your answer. <laughs> Disappeared on that port side. Uh, what blasted fool was running wild on this man's ocean? Oh, what is this anyway? Ahoy there! Where are you going with that crate? Ahoy! Ahoy! Who are you? Why don't you answer? Set double look out for now. Look hard and starboard side. She's out there someplace. You take a port side. Right, sir. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's the Flying Dutchman. Ah, uh, go on. There ain't no such thing. Well, it's starting. Aha! Aha! Ah, uh, so that's it, huh? A lot of joy riding the land lovers. Don't even know how to handle a wheel. Hey, Cap! Uh, There's nobody at the wheel. Oh. Take a look at the wheel. I see her. You're right. She's out of control. All the lake boats are gone. There's one hanging on the davit. We'll have to board her. Maybe she's a freight ship. Call her a service. Ah, uh, looks like she costs a lot of dough. Think of the salvage on her. Arson! Aye, sir. Stand by the lower boat. Aye, sir. Stand by the lower way. Aye, sir. Well, it'll be hard to board her while she's underway, but it can be done. Stand by the boat. All right. Hey, Don. Right, you better come with us. You never can tell what we'll find.
hope, Doc? Afraid not. Skull crush. Hey, this is some kind of a devil ship. Wilson. Yes, Mr. Creek. Did you? Well, never mind. That'll be all. Aye, right, sir. I never seem to be able to put anything down and find it again. If you don't keep your trash off my desk, I'll start. Hello, Hello, Mac. Hello, Hello Mac. Hello, Mac. Going on deck to get a breather? Uh, would you mind if I had Wilson get these radiograms off? Not at all, my dear chap. I want you to feel that my yacht and everything on it is at the disposal of my guests. You do, thanks. Where are you off to? I thought I'd up in the sea, Lily.
party, sir. I didn't hear you come in. That's all right. Wilson, I suppose nobody saw this radiogram but you. It was not. I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Cleese. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll soon be passing the Simone Islands. Ever been there? Yes, once, sir. Oh, recently? Fairly. Went ashore with a scientific survey. Oh, what are they like? I mean, climate and so forth. Regular paradise. Yes, sir. Mr. Good. Thank you. Sit down, Wilson. Oh. Are they all inhabited? Some of the islands are, but on quite a few of them there isn't a soul. Oh. How about natural resources? Mm, there's fruit and game and fish. Everything a man needs. Could a woman live there? Well, I don't see why not. They're right off the beaten track, too, aren't they? Yes, sir. Well, I suppose a man could go ashore there and could be heard out again. Yes, sir. I suppose he could. But if a boat stopped with passengers missing, there'd be questions. Somebody talked. Well, the ideal situation would be if the boat never docked at all. Well, that's a pretty tall order, sir. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't say it was impossible. A determined man in a desperate situation might destroy a boat and every living soul on board. And I should say about uh, eighty-five hundred dollars wholesale. Max always buys them wholesale. I wish he wouldn't. It makes me feel like a chorus girl. You're going to marry him, aren't you? You better. I'll be working myself up into a perfect love by getting you two together. I wish you hadn't, Millicent. Don't you like him? Of course I do. I think he's a perfectly grand person. But, but I... you tell me you're waiting for love. I shall positively scream. Dear Max, just itching to pour $150 million into your stocking. Money didn't make you happy. No. But you've got enough. There are always compensations. Oh, it's all such a hopeless muddle. Well, that's gratitude for you. If you wanted love, then why in the devil did you quarrel with Jim Cowell? Why? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's because I was madly in love with him. Are you still in love with him? Then why did you come on the cruise? Well, I wanted to hurt Jim. <laughs> well, you get your wish, all right. When you marry Max in Australia and Jim finds out, he's not exactly going to leap with joy. Millicent, don't. And you promised to marry Max the day we docked in Sydney. I know. You can't fool around with Max Creek. Max is not the fooling kind. I wouldn't want to. I promised him that I'd... I must be running along. I've got an appointment. You better be careful about those appointments. What do you mean? A yacht is a small place, but just big enough to get into trouble. Meaning? Caught up? <laughs> oh, but he plays so divinely. And everything. 
Those flowers are pretty, aren't they, huh? Oh, wonderful. So many days out of sea. In the ice box, you keep the roses fresh like a daisy, huh? Yeah, so many days at sea. When I'm not seasick, I'm homesick. And when I'm not homesick, I'm sick and tired. I wish I was back in Bayonne, I'll tell you that. Uh, a fine steward to make, huh? Well, I'm doing the best I can. Besides, I ain't a regular steward. No? No, I'm a gentleman's gentleman. Well, why you come on this trip? Well, because I've been working for Mr. Creek so long, he asked me. He says I'm the only man he ever had who can give his necktie that little, you know, that little... Hey, <laughs> Give it, Bob. Yeah, that little, uh... Black <laughs> uh, it. What? Give it again. Yeah. <laughs> you love my Uncle Louie. He can give it this. <laughs> Try that on your bridge work. I want to go home. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What do you carry that thing around for? Yeah, I told you before, that's for good luck. Oh, don't be silly. Yeah, no, no kidding, it is. You see that? That came off an umbrella that my Uncle Louis carried all through the Civil War. Well, did it bring him good luck? Yeah, he was struck by lightning. Well, that won't do you any good. No, no, but when I put it with my girl's guard, that rounds it out. Uh, you get it? Yeah, no. No, no. Well, we let it lay. Now, don't be following me now, because i got to deliver these daffodils. Oh, Mr. Woodard. Oh. Yeah, what, what, what? What are you always running away from me for? Don't you like me? Yeah, you're all right, but you get in my hair. And besides, I've got a girl. Tell you again, I'm going to marry her when I get back to Bayonne. If I ever do get back. Well, I hope you don't. Oh, oh, do me a favor. Don't ever say that again. Ain't we got bad luck enough around here as it is? Yesterday I saw a seagull flying upside down. This morning I put my pants on inside out. Oh, Mr. Witherspoon. Well, what's the matter with that? Ain't you ever put your... Uh... What day did we sail on? Friday, Friday the 13th. 13th. Well, there you are. Oh, don't be superstitious. Isn't that the same day you met me? Well, it's things like that that make me superstitious. <laughs> You know what this is? No, but it's very beautiful. It is the story of a poor troubadour who falls in love with a very nice princess. <laughs> Does the princess love him, or is she too nice? I hope she loves him, because he loves her very dearly. Oh, but she is married to a rich old prince who locks her up in a gloomy castle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor troubadour. What does he do? Oh, he rescues her, of course. Takes her far away to a strange land where the... Oh, my darling. Here I am, kid. Blackie, where have you been with those roses? Well, uh, they were a little stiff, so I thought I'd better limber them up. That'll be all, thank you. That'll be all. Yes. Yeah, come in. There. Yeah. Max, I do believe you're a magician. I mean, fresh roses in the middle of the Pacific. I have a large and very efficient refrigerator. You think of everything, don't you, Max? I always make it a point, my dear, to look ahead. You look at me like that, Max. You're so superior. Anybody would think you just put over one of your big deals. I have the biggest deal of my life. I'm going to marry you. Sydney's a long way off. Eleven days, twenty-three hours. And eight minutes. Time for lots to happen. Well, yes. Lots could happen. You know, Lily, sometimes I wish we weren't going to Sydney at all. I wish we were going somewhere alone. A deserted island. Some place where we'd never meet a soul. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Robinson Crusoe. Exactly. You know there are islands near here that are regular gardens of Eden. 
uh, a friend of mine visited them once on a scientific survey. Come in. I, I beg your pardon, sir, but the captain would like to see you up in the radio room right away. So you found him lying in this position? Yes. I came up here immediately after I saw you below. Send these radiograms I asked you about. Wilson was all right then. I waited in my cabin about an hour, came back here to see if there was any answer for me. And found him like this. Oh. Well, you're wrong, gentlemen. This is not a suicide at all. It's a deliberate, cold-blooded murder. How do you make that out? There are no powder burns in his tunic and the guns in his left hand. I happen to know that Wilson was not left-handed. Better make for the nearest port, Captain. That'll be the Samoan Islands. We can make the American port in about 36 hours, sir. The sooner the better. Aye, sir. Aye. Back to your station. Aye, sir. Aye. Mr. Hazard, I'll have to ask you and the rest of my guests to come to my cabin until we can investigate this awful tragedy. Certainly. Uh, excuse me, Captain. Uh, is Mr. Wilson at the... Yes. He was shot through the heart. Oh. He was a swell kid. I had a hunch I shouldn't have come on this trip. What day did we sail? Friday the 13th. The color of the ship's cat, black. Seagulls upside down, pants on, inside out. Oh, the only thing that's missing is a cross-eyed sailor. Holy mackerel, when did you get on? Captain Allison and I have examined the crew, and we're pretty well satisfied of their innocence. That rather narrows down our field. It is my belief that Wilson was killed in the line of duty. In other words, I believe he was murdered either because he refused to send a message or because he refused to conceal one. Why the smashed apparatus? Because the murderer was anxious to cut off all communication with the outer world. You talk like a fool, Craig. What message could be so vital as to make now, a man... Now, just a moment, please, and let me illustrate my point. Now, take yourself, for instance. Your financial interests are pretty heavily involved. You admitted that this morning when you came to me to borrow money to cover up that copper deal. Now, suppose Wilson received a radiogram jeopardizing your future. And suppose, uh, merely as an illustration, of course, that your financial interests had collapsed and that you had been indicted by a grand jury. Now, let's suppose also that that radiogram was to Captain Allison ordering your arrest. Why pick on me? It might just as easily apply to you. Of course it might. Only I didn't go to Wilson's cabin. And if you'll remember, it was you who discovered the murder. Now look here, Craig. I've had enough of your bastard insinuations. I'm very you... sorry, Mr. Hazlitt. But this dreadful affair has got to be cleared up. I, I, I beg your pardon, sir. Well, Blackie? I, I think I've got an idea of how we can find out who did it, sir. Well, go on. Well, my Uncle Louis told me a story one time about a murder aboard a boat. Of course, it wasn't as nice a boat as this one, but it was a nice boat. Well, go on, go on. Well, uh, at first, no one knew who did it. They suspected this one, and they suspected that one. But the one who really did it, they never did suspect. Well, and who did do it? The steward, sir. Oh. Oh, excuse me, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned it. Now, in future, you speak when you're spoken to. Get back there. Yes, sir, with pleasure, sir. Way back. Mr. Cordup, would you mind telling us where you were during the hour preceding the murder? Of course. I was in the lounge. Every afternoon I go there. Your piano is so marvelous. Yes, sir. Yes. And Millicent, where were you? In the least sick room. And after that? In the lounge. With Mr. Cordar? Yes. He wanted me to listen to some of his compositions. Oh, my please. I'm sorry, my dear, but we've got to clear up this terrible crime. And you were there all the time. You didn't go anyplace else. Certainly not. I'm sorry, Millicent, but that's not the truth. Mr. Craig, I resent such. Be quiet. Mr. Craig. What is it, Blackie? Uh, can I be excused? No, come here. 
So you know perfectly well that I want to question you. Now, did you see Mrs. Hazlitt and Mr. Cordoff in the lounge? What? Come on, I'll speak up. Yes, sir, I did. Hmm. How long do you think they were there? B about 15 minutes. Hmm. Did you see where they went? Oh, no, answer me. Must I tell? Certainly. They went into Mr. Cordoff's cabin. Oh. And then what? I heard the door lock. What the devil are you talking now, about? Just a minute, Hazlitt. Can I go now? Yes, but don't go far. I may need you again. No, no, no. If you need me, just whistle. I'll be on the poop deck. That'll be all, Captain Allison. Now, Hazlitt, let's give Mr. Cordoff a chance. Well? What the man has said, Mr. Hazlitt, is true. Why, who? Now, you see, sir, I have the honor to love your wife very greatly. Millicent, I want to talk with you alone. Is there anything I can do? You'll excuse us, please. Thank you, Liz. It's all right. I'm sorry, dear, that I couldn't keep you out of this. You'd better go to your cabin. Mr. Cordoff, your conduct has been inexcusable. You've abused my hospitality, and you've placed Millicent in a very unfortunate position. I'm deeply sorry, but surely we can settle this matter like gentlemen. That's not my point. What do you mean? Well, surely you realize that Mr. Hatton is a man with a very vicious temper, and I'm afraid Millicent's in danger from him. Do you know once I saw that poor girl with bruises on her wrist and fingerprints around her throat in that man's boot camp? I can't believe it. Well, once in New York, I saw What I'm trying to find out from you is, do you love this man? Answer me! Yes. Oh! No, 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 no. no, no, no. I'll tell you! It's wrong with you that drive me to murder! No, no, no. You're stabbing! Oh! 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 First aid kit, right away. All right, sir. Yeah, I, I, I want to go home. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Well, come on. What's all this? It's Mr. Hazlitt, sir. There's been a fight. You badly hurt? He's dead. Take him to his cabin and post a guard over him. Mr. Parsons. Yes, sir.
Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You mustn't worry so much, dear. I'm frightened, Max. Frightened to death. I dead. know, but we've got to carry on just as though nothing had happened. Pardon me, sir. Will you take a look at that? What is it? Well, it's an airplane partly submerged. That's what I thought, sir. So there's a man on it. Pardon? There's an airplane afloat two points off the port bow. Order your course and lay alongside. Aye, aye, sir. The plane two points off the port bow. Order your course and lay alongside. Aye, aye sir. Break out your nose ladder. Break it on the fourth side, far to the break. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Getting aboard, all right. Let's go below. Jim. Hello, Lily. Jim. Mr. Craig, this is Mr. Cowell. How do you do, Mr. Craig? I. How do you do? Beg your pardon. We thank you. Sorry to cause you all this trouble, but our motor got tired and quit on us. That's quite all right. It's really an amazing coincidence, isn't it? Well, you see, I... I mean, I... picking up a friend of yours in the middle of the Pacific. You are friends, aren't you? Are we? Why, we yes, were... Yes, we were. Oh. You realize there was one chance in a thousand of us finding you? Why, not at all. I passed you a couple of hours ago and simply stayed on your course. Oh. You're really quite a resourceful young man, aren't you? Thank you. Well, Max, I should imagine Mr. Cowles is starving. Oh, pardon me. Blackie! Blackie! Yeah! Well. Yeah! Hey, guys, what are the bus Yeah, come right up, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Blackie, this is Mr. Cowles. How do you... How, 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 how do you do, sir? How are you, Blackie? Look after him, will you, please? Yes, sir. Yeah, right this way, sir. Thank you. Got any luggage? Not a bit. Weren't you and Mr. Carl's lunch engaged? Why, yes. Oh. Oh, bread and butter. Uh, excuse me, sir. <laughs> what the devil's the matter with all you people? You said there been a murder committed. There has been, sir. Two of them. Who? First the radio operator, and then Mr. Hazlitt. Yeah. Whoop, there goes another one. Well, who did this? <clears throat> or just people. Ex excuse me for asking, sir, but uh, would you would you mind telling me who and why and what? And no, how? not right now, Blackie, please. I'm a bit jumpy. Yeah, I've been noticing that. Your heart's been pumping something terrible. What? That's not my heart. It's my mascot. It's a kitten. Uh, uh, what color is it? Oh, yes. oh, white one. Yeah. Oh, gee, that's good luck. Can I, can I take them? Sure, go right ahead. Oh, here. what do you know about that? Say, Blackie, would you take good care of them for me, please? Who, me? Yeah. Will I? Oh, thank you. I'll be just like a mother to it. Oh, fine. What he really needs now is some milk. But, Jimmy, if only I'd heard from you, if only you'd answered my letter, I'd never have started on this dreadful cruise. And I'm telling you I didn't get the letter until after you'd sailed. Why, oh, popped off, located the yacht, and cracked up the plane. Well, why did you follow me? Because I knew if I found you, everything would be all right. And it is, isn't it? Isn't it? 
Lily, what's the matter? It's too late, Amy. I promised to marry Max Cream. What is it, Millicent? I've got to talk to you. Oh, Millicent, dear, I'm sure it's much better for you if we don't discuss these terrible, terrible facts. Let's try to think of the brighter side of life. Stop debating me, Max. We've got to discuss this. Max, what are you going to do with Claude Officer? Millicent, I'm frightfully sorry for Claude Officer. I'm sorry for you, too. But the whole thing is entirely out of my hands. I have no jurisdiction in the matter whatever. It will all be settled when we arrive in Samoa. You've got to get him out. You've got to get him out. I've got him. Millicent, you are coward. But he won't know. Believe me, Lucy. It's all your fault. Your husband was one of my dearest friends. His death was due entirely to your own misconduct. I only did my duty. Is it? Pardon, senor. You lose something? Uh, no, senor. Uh, si, senor. The ice box, she's locked. I cannot find the key. Well, haven't you another one? Uh, no, senor. She's the only key. Hmm. Well, I expect she'll turn up. Si, senor. Captain Allison, what was it you wanted to ask me about Mr. Cordell? Well, pardon me for speaking of it now, Mr. Cree, but it seems to me, as captain of this ship, I should be permitted to question Mr. Cordell in connection with the death of uh, Mr. Hazlitt and uh, Wilson, so that I can make an intelligent report to the authorities once we land in Samoa. I'm sorry, Captain, but after all, Mr. Cordell was my guest. I can't have you questioned. We'll leave that to the authorities. Even if he also killed Wilson, he's entitled to have a lawyer present. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Priest. Yeah? Luigi tells me that he can't make that salad you ordered because he can't find the key to the icebox. Oh. Well, what's he going to do about it? Well, he's going to have another key made right after dinner. Oh, I see. I suppose Millicent isn't coming in to dinner. After all she's been through, I didn't like to disturb her. No. Uh, Blackie. Yes, sir. You might go to Mrs. Hazlitt's room later on, see if she'd like something served there. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, I don't think I touched the soup. Why? What's the matter? Well, I'm afraid it's not very good. Uh, Blackie, ask Luigi to come in, will you? Yes, sir. I'm awfully sorry. It never happened before. Luigi's usually so careful. Signore? Luigi, what's the matter with the soup? Uh, nothing, Signore. It is the soup I make and like you are there. Well, it's very bad. Blackie. Don't serve any more. No, sir. Will you permit me?
must have been some violent poison to cause death so quickly. Apparently it was meant for you, sir. I'm afraid it was. Oh, Jim. Matt's so horrible. I never saw anything work so fast in all my life. He took one mouthful of it and zowie. There he lay in a pool of clam chowder, dead in a... Clam. Yeah, clam. Oh, I'm all goose pimples. Oh, it was terrible. And you should have seen his eyes. They were wide and staring, looking up at me like a couple of poached eggs. Oh, Mr. Witherspoon. What was it? It was poison. Poison? Yeah. Who do you suppose did it? Look, I've been figuring this thing out, see? And there's only one guy who could really have done it. Who? The guy who served the soup. Now, don't you worry, dear. You go to bed and try and get a little sleep. Good night, Matt. Good night. You dropped this, sir. Mr. Witherspoon, I've got to see you right away. It's important. The usual place. Yeah, by the lifeboat. Oh, thank you, Blackie. Uh, that'll be all, sir? That's all, Blackie. Thank you, sir. Oh, Blackie. Yes, sir. Good luck. What do you mean, Lena? Ah, uh, uh, it's not that, sir. No, I, I think the poor girl's in trouble. Uh, 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 no, it's not that either, sir. I mean, I, 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 mean, I mean, she's a nice girl, but I mean, she's not up my alley, if you know what I mean. Sure, I know. You, uh, yes. Don't you want this other package? No, I'll put it in my cabin. Yes, sir. Lena, I couldn't hear. Lena? Lena? Did you see where she went? She was here a minute ago and... Miss Barton! Miss Barton! Full speed astern! Woman overboard! Man number four lifeboat! Stand by to lower the weight! Aye, aye, sir! All hands on deck! All hands on deck! Who is it? Captain Allison, sir. Come in, Captain Allison. Well, did they find her? No, sir. Uh, 
but they found her rat. How dreadful. Dreadful. Mr. Creed, do you know anything about these murders that you're not telling me? Why, of course not. How should I? I was on the bridge when the girl disappeared. I saw her walking along the deck and turned toward the rail back of one of the lifeboats. Mr. Krieg, it was the last time she was ever seen. Well? Mr. Krieg, would you mind telling me what you were doing near the lifeboat? Lifeboat? Oh, you're mistaken. No, I'm not. I was on the bridge and saw you myself. What makes you think you saw me? Well, you... Captain Allison, your attitude amounts almost to an accusation. But I've got to clear this thing up. Why, of course. But suspicions against myself can't be tolerated. If I had anything to do with these strange happenings on board, do you suppose I'd be so foolish as to allow anyone on my own ship to go about suspecting me? Answer me, do you? No, but you... <laughs> Her up on top aboard. Then the skipper disappears. Then the mate. We searched the ship, not a sign of either of them. And now all the boats are gone except this one. And if we got a lick of sense, we'll launch it and shove off before it's too late. Ah, uh, you're the idea. crazy. You know what happened to the rest of the crew that tried to get away. Yeah, but they tried to launch their boats while we were underway. Well, what are you asking me to do? Pass the word to the chief engineer. Get him to heave to so we can launch this boat. And the quicker the better. There's something loose aboard this ship. Something that ain't human or natural. You're taking an awful chance, all of us trying to get away in this one boat. Well, it's a chance, ain't it? And any chance is better than staying on here. Well, I'll tell you. You guys get in the galley and get a lot of stuff and stow it. Now you're talking. Caught off. Caught off. You must pull yourself together, man. Millicent has committed suicide. They found her body just now. It looks like poison. I was talking to her earlier in the evening. I think her husband's murder unbalanced her mind. Millicent loved you, Cordoff. You were her one chance of real happiness. But when you murdered her husband, you destroyed it. Millicent knew that. And she couldn't go on. So she committed suicide. Thank you. 
terrible. Isn't there anything we can good, Blackie? Well, excuse me, miss, but after Luigi passed out, we thought we'd better not take any more chances with the cooking. <laughs> Canned peas is very good cold. You're sure that everything you've served us, Blackie, is out of freshly opened cans? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Open them myself. Yeah, look at there. And the others, they've all had some of this? Yes, sir. And the crew, what are they eating? The same. I expect I'll be opening cans the rest of the night. That is, if my thumbs hold out. I'll see if I can find something else. Oh, there, there now, darling, don't. This is horrible, not knowing who's going next. We'll keep a close watch. We'll be in some more in the morning, and then everything will be all... <coughs> Excuse me, uh, 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 Mr. Carlos, can I speak to you a minute? Excuse me. Will you excuse me a moment, darling, please? Certainly. Keep her in here. Yes, sir. Oh, Blackie, what's happened? Oh, they, they, they just found a, a, a leak in the rudder. Uh, can I get you something else? Who killed her? That's what I want to know. There's no mark of any kind. You mean no stabbing? No shooting? Nothing like that. She's just plain dead, that's all. Then it ain't done by human hands. Ain't I been telling you there's something queer on this boat? I ain't touching Me her. neither. I'm getting off of this boat. Me too. The sooner the better. You're right, sailor. The sooner we get off. Yeah. Here comes that idiot fellow. Scram. You mustn't worry too much, dear. Tomorrow we'll be in Samoa. Then everything will be all right. Here's something you might like, sir. Oh, thank you, Blackie. Please, Mr. Creed. What? The crew is dirty. What? The pilot up the engine with four bells and take the sea in the lifeboat. How do you know that? I heard him talking. You got a gun? Yes. Well, come on. Right. Blackie, you stay here and keep your eye on the chin. Yes, sir. Blackie. Yes, sir. Blackie, do you need help? Yeah, but what can we do that ain't dangerous? Have you got a key to Mr. Cordoff's stateroom? Yes, miss. Go and release him and tell him what's happened. No, but Mr. Cordoff was the one Don't that... argue. Get him a gun. A gun? Yes. You mean a loaded go gun? Go on. Go oh, on. I need to hide. Blackie. I wish I was back and stay home. Oh. All right, snap it up, boy. Mr. Cordoff? Mr. Cordoff? Mr. Cordoff? That's funny. I, I want to go home. Help! 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 What do you think about my missionary nightgown? Give it to him. That's it. All right, men, stand where you are. I'll shoot the first man among you who moves. Do you think you can handle those engines? For the diesel? Yeah. I think so. Well, you get below and get them started. Right. I'll take care of this. So you're going to desert the ship, are you? Well, you rats, get in that boat. I'll kill any man among you who stays behind. Swing around, boys! Swing around! Swing away! Get him on here! Let me in! Let me in! I just saw another one! The boat is haunted! No, wait a minute! Let me out! Let me out! I forgot something! I'll be back in a minute! I'll be right back! Wait a minute! Hey, listen, listen! We don't wait for nobody! Hold it! Hold it! Somebody's been monkey with these balls! The rope's been cut! Hold it! Here I am, wait a minute. 
Now, wait a minute. Have a look at this. There's someone else on board. There is somebody aboard. Ahoy there. Who's there? Come out of it. We carried the whole engine room on fire. There's a woman down there. Can you get up to the fire hut? I don't think so, but we'll try. I'll make a try. We'll lower her and we'll hurry up. Hey, there you go. 